<laughs> those donuts look good. <laughs> That'll Hold do it for us. Hold the phone. Wait, hang on. It's National Leave the Office Early Day? Yeah. Why are and you here? I missed the memo. <laughs> Wait, hang on, Lindsay. Okay. Bye. See you later. <laughs> well, I'm not doing your show, though. So <laughs> I got I to gotta hit the road myself. <laughs> All right. Lindsay, have a great weekend. Happy Friday. <laughs> <laughs> We're following several top stories for you at this hour, beginning in Washington. Debt crisis averted. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill vote yes to a bipartisan debt limit a deal with just days to spare. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, what comes next as the bill now heads to the president's desk. Also, advocates in Florida right now warning new anti-migration laws could bring more harm to workers in the state than help. We'll explain why. And as the healthcare industry faces shortages, a 90-year-old nurse is still finding her joy in her career. How she's been helping parents adapt to life with a new bundle of joy. Scripps News Live begins right now. G-I-F. Congratulations, you made it to Friday. Thank you so much for being with us today. It is now noon in the east and 9 a.m. out west. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Good to see you. Welcome to Scripps News Live. So it was a long night in the Senate. But when all was said and done, the bill to raise the debt ceiling made it through on a bipartisan basis. That final vote, 63 to 36. But it came after several hours of debate over 11 proposed amendments, all of which failed. Since no changes had to be made, the bill will now head to the president's desk to be signed into law. And this is going to keep the country from defaulting on its debt, which would have happened for the very first time ever. Let's get you right out to national political correspondent Kevin Cirilli, who has been live on the Hill for what? Days, if not weeks, if not months. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Kevin, all right. So they finally got the bill across the finish line. Now it just has to make it to the president's desk. He's got to sign it and then it becomes law. So what have the biggest takeaways been so far? Veronica, it's almost signed, it's almost sealed, it's almost delivered to President Biden, who later today is expected, in fact, to sign this bipartisan agreement that he reached with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and in, in raising the nation's debt ceiling from the current level of $31.4 trillion for nearly two years. So we're not going to have to talk about this for nearly two years. Uh, and take a listen to what the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer had to say. Here he is. Well, I hope the MAGA Republicans have learned that this strategy of trying to be hostage taking and do threats and hurt the American people unless they get their way just doesn't work. And I'd hope they'd learn their lesson. Now, politically speaking, this really did lay bare some of the uh, criticism within the Republican caucus that House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is facing from some ultra-conservative hardliners in the Freedom Caucus. Uh, and some of them are even floating the idea of trying to remove him uh, from his speakership. But earlier this morning, we heard from a prominent Republican strategist, T.W. Origi, who came out and said that uh, he thinks that folks have been underestimating Speaker McCarthy for quite some time. That's what's happening on the right, meanwhile, in the halls of Congress. Outside of Congress, you have the presidential politics starting to creep into both parties' political discourse. Former President Donald Trump, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, former Vice President Mike Pence, all saying that this is a deal that they couldn't get behind. Separately from that, on the left, you're hearing from some progressives like AOC, as well as others who have said that President Biden gave up too much ground. Either way, there are a lot of folks who are breathing a collective economic sigh of relief today. Markets are much of the green for much of the morning. And in addition to that, we got a new labor report, though unemployment did tick up to 3.7 percent. Uh, there was some positive signs as the labor report did beat expectations with the number of jobs added to the U.S. economy in the previous month. And groups like the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, as well as the Aspen Institute, both praising the decision for lawmakers to reach this bipartisan agreement to provide some economic certainty, not just in the U.S., but also globally, as trust in the U.S. economy can still be made maintain now the risk of a downgrade by three by the other two major credit agencies or an even further downgrade from s p off the table as it relates to the debt ceiling but the final point i think from my reporting and and, and you and i veronica we've really i think tried to hone in on this there was a lot of disagreement amongst the various factions but there truthfully was only a handful of folks who didn't want to raise the debt ceiling altogether. So even as we flash forward to 15 or 18 or two years from now, when this debate likely gets had again, it's, it's, 
every single time now, 79 times, soon to be 79 times, Washington has come together to raise the debt ceiling. Um, and, and truthfully, the, the outliers uh, are, are, are not able uh, to, to win over an argument that it shouldn't be raised. So how it got raised was the p parameters of this debate, not that it should get raised. Does that make sense? No, absolutely. And, and we were able to experience yep. all the political drama in between. I've got my phone out right here with my calendar marking the date, June 2nd, 2025. That is when you and I will have this discussion again. <laughs> <laughs> Two years from now. Uh, but yeah. to your point, Kevin, I was checking in on the markets. The Dow jumping 600 points on the news. Uh, s and is up 54 points. NASDAQ is up 122 points. So obviously investors really like this. Um, what do you think comes next? I, I feel like every single time analysts are predicting that the economy will contract, the opposite happens. Now we've got this, this jobs report, which shows that... Uh, that there were more gains than analysts had predicted. Do you think Jerome Powell is going to raise interest rates again? Well, that's the big debate in the market world right now is because you still have inflation a little bit higher than most people had wanted. And in addition to that, you also still have uh, an unemployment number that did slightly tick up despite the, the, lab, the strong labor gains uh, in the marketplace. So it's a bit of a mixed uh, picture in terms of whether or not the, the, how much of a slowdown the economy will have at the end of the fourth quarter based on the, the reporting that I do when I, when I interview economists. Uh, but the pressure now on the central bank in terms of uh, the rate hikes and what all of this will mean, they're going to have to sort through all of this. Uh, but, you know, no doubt. Uh, I remember covering uh, uh, then Fed Chair Janet Yellen, who would speak every time these debates came up on the debt ceiling about the economic catastrophic impacts it would have on the economy. Washington and, and Congress, to, to some extent, did its job. They, they passed legislation bipartisanly to, to raise the nation's debt ceiling. Uh, I also think it, it it, it, you know, there was the, a Chinese credit rating agency uh, backed by the Communist Party came out and downgraded the United States uh, because of this. I'm not sure it really, you know, I, I think it, it kind of, it, the U.S. can kind of roll its eyes at that downgrade uh, in the sense that it, the other three majors did not. Uh, and I think that that was kind of wishful thinking based on my reporting and analysis uh, to see, uh, you know, a, a foreign government try to inject a downgrade during a time of political volatility in a democracy. So there's that conversation to be had as well. Uh, but overall, the geopolitical risk um, abroad, in addition to uh, the decisions that Fed Chairman Jay Powell has to make, uh, is, is still going to uh, keep uh, the ec economic forecast uh, somewhat mixed bag picture for the end of this year. Yeah, and, and as somebody who has been covering Washington for quite some time, Kevin, were you surprised with the bipartisanship? that we ended up saying because yes. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy spent a lot of political capital to get this bill done and I'm getting the hard wrap so I've got to let you go my friend but it's always nice to see you and we always appreciate your reporting have a great weekend thank you well a provision in the debt ceiling agreement will soon bring the pause on student loan payments to an end to add on to the financial stress for borrowers a bill to block President Biden's student loan forgiveness program now headed to his desk yesterday the Senate voted to block the relief plan which is going to cancel up to twenty thousand dollars in debt for millions of borrowers the House passed the same legislation last week and a few Democrats joined Republicans voted on the bill President Biden is promising to veto it, but his forgiveness plan is still in jeopardy. The Supreme Court is set to rule on two legal challenges to that program later this month or in early July. And these are not only uncertain times for people with outstanding student loan, uh, but also for recent high school grads who are about to take on that student loan debt. College admissions consultant Jason Weingarten says that students need to conduct a cost-benefit analysis that you need to really understand is the college that you want to go to, the college that you want to take out tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars, really worth the paper that's agreed. The worth the paper is written on. For most people, the answer as of now is going to be sadly no. Now, he went on to say that the government might be contributing to higher education's high cost by subsidizing student loans. And starting on July 1st, Florida businesses are going to be facing large penalties if they employ undocumented migrants. There will be statewide bans on issuing identification documents. And in addition, out-of-state licenses will no longer be valid. Some undocumented migrants have already left the state, while others who remain fearful of what might lie ahead 
had this to say. National correspondent Axel Tercios spoke with them. The main concern for advocates and opponents to this law is that they say it will inevitably create a shortage in different labor industries. Undocumented immigrants do most of the jobs in agriculture, construction and hospitality. I spoke to an undocumented mother from Mexico and she tells me she doesn't want to leave Florida. But if the time comes, she'll have to make the hard decision to leave the state. Mornings in Miami started with a traditional cafecito before Mireya Estrada starts work. Estrada is a farm worker. Sí, está complicado. Aparte, las cubetas son muy pesadas. The Mexican mother harvesting crops for over 18 years under the hot Florida sun. Aparte de la calor, pues uno tiene que andar rápido. But now her family's future is uncertain. Florida no va a poder tener personas que les levante las, las cosechas y las siembras. Estrada, along with many undocumented migrants in Florida, is considering leaving the state. Is a threat. A response to, to Governor Ron DeSantis' new immigration law. Advocates are concerned as impacts loom across Florida's agriculture, construction, and hospitality sectors. Part of the law includes employers with more than 25 employees will be required to use a federal program called E-Verify to check their immigration status. Some of the persons working in the farms have some multiple families. Some of them have documents, but others not. Driving through Homestead, 30 miles southwest of Miami, fields are empty. The farmer of this okra field tells me that before the law was signed, he would have up to 20 people working here. Now that number has gone down to 10 or less. He's now considering reducing his crop production. The Florida Policy Institute estimates that without undocumented workers, the state's most labor-intensive industries would lose 10% of their workforce. It also addresses people that are coming in and out of the state. To put it simply, anyone caught transporting undocumented immigrants could face legal trouble. What we expect is that maybe as people are coming in through the border and get stopped for other infractions, they could lead to questioning as to who they're transporting. And of course, the consequences, which is interesting, is for the resident U.S. citizen, not really for the immigrant. Anyone violating this part of the law could face up to five years in prison. We asked Florida Republican State Senator Blazing Golia, one of the sponsors of the immigration bill, if the law would be enforced in instances such as bus companies and airlines. In a statement to Scripps News, he says normal bus and airline travel would not apply unless they were specifically and purposefully smuggling illegal immigrants into the state. Tenemos que hacer muchísimo para poder sacar una cubeta. Estrada, her husband, and two of her children crossed the U.S.-Mexico border illegally. Her youngest, her 14-year-old daughter, was born here. ¿Tiene temor de que la separen de su familia? Sí, sí, tengo mucho temor y miedo y pues muchas dudas. Estrada says her children don't know anything about Mexico. Their home is Florida. ¿Qué sería de la Florida sin trabajadores como ustedes? Pues no va a ser nadie porque nosotros somos los que les hacemos el trabajo. Es un trabajo pesado que yo tengo 18 años en este país y nunca he mirado un americano o un ciudadano en el surco piscando el tomate. The law will take effect July 1st and attorneys and advocates are already saying they will challenge it in court. I'm Axel Tercius, Scripps News, Miami. And so to come on Scripps News Live, why the FDA believes there are cancer drug shortages across the country right now. We're back up to this. This is an important message for anyone and everyone on or eligible for Medicare. If Medicare is important to you, then you need to hear this message because Medicare benefits matter to millions of Americans. Did you know Medicare has different parts, including Medicare Part A and Part B, often called Original Medicare? And then there's Medicare Part C, representing Medicare Advantage plans, and Part D for prescription drug coverage. Call 800-912-2786 now for your free Medicare coverage checkup. We can look up your plan and see 
if you're missing out on a plan with extra benefits or if your income qualifies you to reduce costs on your prescription medications. Did you know there are different enrollment periods like the Medicare annual enrollment period when beneficiaries can enroll in or change coverage? But there are also certain conditions or qualifications that may allow you to qualify for a special enrollment period any time of the year. So call the number on your screen now for your free Medicare coverage checkup. This is a free service that you can call at absolutely no cost to you. I'm on Medicare. I called to see if my income qualified for lower prescription medication costs. The friendly agent was very knowledgeable and I found out I qualified for a special enrollment period. So I'm so glad I called. We can look up your plan and see if you are missing out on a plan with extra benefits. We can also check to see if your income qualifies you to reduce the cost of your prescription medications. And we can even tell you if you qualify for a special enrollment period. It's your free Medicare coverage checkup at absolutely no cost to you. Just call 800-912-2786. And you can speak with a licensed agent who can check up on your plan and answer your questions. The Medicare Benefits and Questions line is open and anyone on or eligible for Medicare can call. The call and Medicare coverage checkup is free with no obligation. Call now. We love talking to people with Medicare, and the call is free. Just call 800-912-2786. 800-912-2786. There's a lot to watch on TV these days. Problem is, most streaming options are incredibly pricey, and you'll end up paying for the local channels you can get for free. Luckily, there's a solution. Sling is only 40 bucks a month. And you get awesome stuff like sports, news, and today's hottest TV for half of what the other guys cost. If you already get free locals with an antenna, now you can easily add the channels you're missing with Sling. It's the TV you love for a price you'll love. Visit sling.com slash antenna to learn more. All month long, Scripps News is shining a light on awareness. The state is saying to us, it's fine if you're gay or a gay family, as long as, like, we don't see you. Sharing stories of perseverance. You can be 17, you can be 18, you can be 19, and your opinion matters. And going inside the communities, now fighting for their rights. You are doing irreversible damage. They want silence, and we will not be complicit in our eradication. Scripps News presents the stories of Pride Month. All month long, only on Scripps News. 17 minutes after the hour now, and Veronica Dela Cruz. Let's get you caught up on the, the health news that is making headlines right now. With the FDA reporting shortages of more than a dozen cancer drugs across the country, and it is forcing doctors to make difficult decisions about how they treat their patients. Scripps News correspondent Stephanie Sandoval explains what it all means for cancer patients and the efforts to prevent future shortages. These shortages have been going on for several weeks now. Doctors started hearing about the drug shortages back in early April. Drug shortages aren't anything new and can have detrimental outcomes. There are talks, though, at the federal level on how to prevent drug shortages from happening. Key chemotherapy drugs are under shortage. The list has grown to 14, according to the FDA. And doctors are sounding the alarm. These are life-threatening shortages. Some hospitals are completely out. Dr. Eleonora Toplinski, an oncologist based out of New Jersey, treats women with breast and gynecologic cancer. One of the drugs in short supply is called carboplatin, often used to treat breast cancer, as well as ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, and lung cancer. She says she's fortunate that her hospital still has the drug, but she worries it might not last. Some hospitals are having to ration their supply and delay treatment for some patients, which could be life-threatening. To tell a patient that we have this great treatment and it's going to work, but we can't give it to you because it's out in short supply is really, I think, one of the hardest things. Drug shortages are nothing new. Drugs are under a shortage all the time. But according to a report from the Senate Committee on Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs, drug shortages are at a record high. The report says new drug shortages increased by nearly 30 percent between 2021 and 2022. We have not seen a shortage like this um, on this scale, at least in the last 10 years that I can recall. Clinical trials that depend on these drugs could also be put at risk. How is that going to impact the data if we can't give patients the drug that they need? So there, you know, the repercussions are, are really immense. Doctors are also asking why. 
Why are these drug shortages happening? Dr. Arif Kamal with the American Cancer Society told Scripps News newer drugs don't generally face drug shortages. It's the tried and true drugs that eventually come off patent, which then allows other companies to produce generic versions, bringing in new competition, hurting the original maker's bottom line, incentivizing companies to make newer drugs instead, reducing production on the less profitable ones. What is not clear is as a drug comes off patent, what is the strategy to ensure that there's a continued uninterrupted supply chain of drug um, that aligns with the economic incentives that a manufacturer would need to ensure that that, that um, exists? That'll require action from Congress. Angels for Change, an advocacy group whose mission is to end drug shortages, Thank gave you, testimony in a hearing last month before the House Energy and, and Commerce and Committee. During the hearing, Laura Bray, the organization's founder, said transparency is needed to prevent drug shortages from happening. This marketplace is deeply fragmented. Everyone, I think, t talked about transparency today. We do need transparency. There's gaps in knowledge and in until we have a clear picture, we can't address the right solutions for the right problems. She also says collaboration is needed. It includes the FDA, it includes the supply chain members, it includes the manufacturers and the hospitals. How do we align our incentives to get as many patients the needed drugs that they deserve? And that's, you know, the one message I want to say. We need to be connected and collaborate, but then there needs to be tools of connectivity so we can scale. And there's still no word on when exactly these shortages will end. In a statement, the FDA told me while it can't require a pharmaceutical company to make a drug and make more of it, it's working with multiple manufacturers and others in the supply chain to understand what's going on so it can help reduce the impact these shortages have. It also added manufacturers expect drug supply to increase in the near future. Stephanie Sandoval, Scripps News. In other news at this hour, more Alzheimer's patients could soon have access to new drugs. Now, Medicare only plans to cover FDA-approved medications. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services says that physicians will be required to submit data on the drug's effectiveness. The FDA granted accelerated approval for two drugs, and a panel will be voting on whether to recommend full approval for one of those drugs next week. Alzheimer's affects more than 7 million Americans over the age of 65. Well, a new CDC report out shows that the post-pandemic baby boom was actually more of a post-pandemic baby bust. Data is showing that the U.S. birth rate went flat from 2021 to 2022. Scripps News correspondent Morris Sirianni breaks down those numbers and reveals these new trends. Yeah, it is a lot to unpack, but this data uh, really is kind of telling here. There are a few main takeaways. For starters, women are waiting until later in life to have kids. Um, and for the past 16 years, the fertility rate in this country has declined, tracking below the replacement threshold. What that basically means is that the number of births a generation needs to uh, replace itself has dwindled. So the latest information from the CDC finding last year, there were nearly 3.7 million births. That's about 3,000 fewer than in 2021. You may not be thinking that's a lot. The CDC even calling this a non-significant decline, but there were some trends uh, that stuck out. Here's a look at trends over the last decade. For starters, birth rates for moms in their teens and early 20s hit record lows in 2022. The new data finding the rate for 15 to 24 year olds decreased by about 3% from the previous year. And the CDC reports birth rates for women ages 30 to 34 stayed about the same as uh, 2021, accounting for more than 1 million births last year. But women Women ages 35 to 44, that's the age group that saw increases from um, the, the previous year. So that age group as a whole is currently seeing the highest birth rate since the 1960s. And earlier on Morning Rush, we spoke with a doctor about what she thinks could be some of the reasons behind that trend. So I think the increase in women in the workforce has certainly contributed to this. Additionally, the increase in women utilizing services such as ovarian uh, cryopreservation or freezing their eggs and having more and more companies actually uh, paying for this or covering this for women 
has allowed women to really um, delay childbearing in a way that we've never seen before. Science has come a long way. Also noteworthy, births in Hispanic mothers to Hispanic mothers rose 6% while births to white moms fell about 3% and births to black moms fell uh, about 1%. And if we kind of break this down by state, 38 states in D.C. experienced a drop last year while states mainly in the southeast saw an increase. Guys, Florida and Texas leading the pack. Maura, thanks so much. That was Maura Suryani reporting there for us. So the healthcare industry is continuing to face shortages across the country. But at 90 years young, an Arizona nurse says that she's going to be going the extra mile for people who are seeking care. Cameron Pollan with Scripps News Phoenix shows us how this healthcare hero is still saving the day for so many. For Ellie Yuji, it's never just another day at the office. Good morning. But more like another day in a life well lived. Busy today. That's okay. Remember, if we get handed lemons, we make lemonade. Even at an early age, her path to this point seemed to be destiny. I had a dog that had a fractured foot, and I made a splint <laughs> out of two pieces of wood that I found outside in the yard. And my mother said, you did a good job, Ellie. And I said, Mom, I said, I think I want to be a nurse. Priscilla, it's Ellie. How you doing? That's just what she became. Now 90 and going strong. She loves it more than ever. And they say that if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And that's exactly how I feel. 65 years ago, her journey began in a naval hospital, then as a school nurse. But where she's truly found herself is guiding new parents in labor and delivery here at Banner Gateway in Gilbert. He's beautiful. Her kindness, compassion, and contagious humor helping ease moms and dads <laughs> into parenthood. She's been bringing in personal stories and things like that, just making it fun and lighthearted while we've been here. So it's just taking that stress away from all the new stuff we're learning right now. Just hearing her talk and have all that experience in the room, it makes me feel a lot more comfortable. I bring new life in the world all the time. That keeps you going. Thank goodness, especially because she's helping mentor the next generation of nurses following in her larger than life footsteps. He has a little dimple there, but it's close. Can you see that? Yeah. I have to look at myself in the mirror and see my wrinkles and, I, and my white hair and I go, okay, maybe I am 90, I don't know. But I tell them, I feel like I'm in my 30s when I come to work, I really do. She lives a life of moderation and love, one that's seen an amazing marriage produce an incredible family scoffing at the idea of retirement retirement's not in my vocabulary she's truly a one-of-a-kind woman with no plans of slowing down make sure you stay healthy because you have a lot to give the world i'm cameron polum reporting straight out on scripts news live this lgbtq plus activist refused to surrender his identity and his drive for equality gained national attention we're going to share his story next but first we're going to take you inside a Scripps News investigation, tracking one Ukrainian teen as he goes from hiding inside a Kherson orphanage to being abducted and using Russian propaganda. We're going to show you what happens next. You're looking pretty good, Mr. Johnson, but we need to take some x-rays today. That's all. Yes, x-rays are expensive, but... The front desk said you recently enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan with extra benefits that now cover today's x-rays and cleaning costs. Wow, well, okay. Well, Medicare Parts A and B do not cover your routine dental coverage like cleanings, fillings, or x-rays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, you have a Medicare Part C plan, commonly called Medicare Advantage. Medicare Part C plans cover everything in Part A and Part B, plus extra benefits like dental, vision, and hearing. Wow, that's great that my plan includes dental coverage that helps pay for these costs. Yes, Mr. Johnson. A Medicare Part C plan could include dental coverage that pays for routine dental exams and teeth cleanings, dental x-rays, fillings, tooth extractions, root canals, dentures, implants, and crowns. If you're losing coverage, moving, or new to Medicare, call to speak with a licensed insurance agent. You don't get a plan with these benefits automatically, so it's always good to call to see if there's a plan with extra benefits available in your zip code. If you don't have a Medicare Part C plan, call now because there may be plans available with additional benefits that are simply not covered under Medicare Parts A and B, like routine dental coverage. In fact, 24 million Medicare beneficiaries do not have any dental coverage. 
Here's the good news. If you're on Medicare, you can call even if you called last year. We will check to see if there is a Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. Remember, you don't get Medicare Part C benefits automatically. So call now for your free 2023 no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Just call 800-614-5203. 800-614-5203. If I had to replace my engine, the bill would have been over four grand. But my endurance auto protection plan covered it all. A broken AC unit costs over $1,800. A transmission, over $3,000. And an engine, over $4,000. Breakdowns used to mean paying thousands out of pocket until now. Go to endurancewarranty.com or call Endurance today and stop paying for expensive auto repairs. Call 877-204-1467 or visit endurancewarranty.com for a free quote. Shopping for Father's Day is hard. Actually, it's easy. You never know what to get him. Just give me steak. It has to be perfect. Yep. Dad's want steak. Right now, Omaha Steaks is offering Dad's favorite gift package that includes four of our exquisite bacon-wrapped filet mignons, four air-chilled boneless chicken breasts, boneless pork chops, jumbo franks dessert, and more. All for just $99.99. Save 61%. Order today at omahasteaks.com slash TV, and you'll get eight burgers free. Now that's what I'm talking about. Hey there, welcome back to Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Del Cruz. Great to see you today. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Let's get speed right now. The biggest stories we're tracking for you. All right, some good news right here. After weeks of negotiations, the U.S. has avoided a debt ceiling default. The Senate approving the debt ceiling and budget cuts package late last night, one day after the House did the same. Now, neither side got everything they wanted, but the agreement raises that debt ceiling until 2025. Mexican authorities say 45 bags of human remains found in a ravine might be linked to seven missing call center employees. Those workers last seen between May 20th and May 22nd. A Mexican newspaper is reporting the call center is linked to cartels and that employees would call American retirees to try to sell them fake timeshares. And an internal investigation into an eight-year-old girl's death in Border Patrol custody is raising serious questions right now about the agency. The child suffered from a chronic heart condition and a rare blood disorder. Her fever, 104.9 the day before she died. The investigation revealed Border Patrol medical staff didn't review her file. It also found a nurse practitioner refused her mother's repeated requests to call an ambulance. The U.S. has increased the number of appointment slots for migrants using a mobile app to seek asylum along the U.S.-Mexico border. There are now 1,250 appointments available. Back in May, it was 740. The U.S. is hoping increasing the number of appointments will encourage more people to use it. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is saying that Russia's invasion of Ukraine was a strategic failure. During a speech in Helsinki, Blinken said that a ceasefire to the war would be a mistake because it would allow Russia to retain lands that it took. He said that Russia is worse off than before the invasion began. Where Putin aimed to project strength, he's revealed weakness. Where he sought to divide, he's united. What he tried to prevent, he's precipitated. That outcome is no accident. It's the direct result of the courage and solidarity of the Ukrainian people and the deliberate, decisive, swift action that we and our partners have taken to support Ukraine. Blinken's speech in Finland followed a meeting of NATO foreign ministers in Oslo. So since the invasion of Ukraine just over a year ago now, Russia has been accused of abducting thousands of Ukrainian children into Russia or Russian-controlled territory. The International Criminal Court has declared this mass abduction a war crime and has issued an arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin. It has held him personally responsible for the ongoing abduction of kids. Correspondent Jason Bellini has tracked the story of one of these young people now for more than a year. This is Dennis. At an orphanage in Ukraine in May of 2022, on TikTok responding to the question, Ukraine or Russia? They kill, they rape, they steal people. Putin doesn't care. Therefore, I will without hesitation say that I am for Ukraine. That was before Russian forces took him. This is Dennis this winter being held in a Russian-run school shown 
on a Russian propaganda network. Russians are generally very kind people, and the Ukrainians are ready to tear you apart. His is a story we've been following exclusively since the start of the war, after Russian forces quickly overtook the southern city of Kherson. In March of 2022, as fighting raged around them, we reached the orphanage where Dennis lived. The orphanage director, Vladimir Sahaidok, hiding with 50 kids in a crowded room. Hello, what is your name? Dennis. Dennis, a 16-year-old, spoke for the group. Currently, we're in Kherson. We see airplanes flying. We hear explosions very well, usually at night or early morning. War had made Dennis a leader. Older children my age help the teachers with the kids. We don't tell them very much about these events because they panic. We're trying to divert their attention, play with them, watch cartoons. He seemed wise beyond his years. We're surrounded, we're under a blockade. Now there's no food supply. Maybe the USA, with its political influence, can somehow negotiate with the Russian military to allow humanitarian aid. He was also a patriot. Many thanks to the USA, because if it were not for its weapons, not for its help, then Ukraine could already be under the Russian flag. We would lose contact with the orphanage as the war raged on. Then, in the fall, we finally got a message from the director. The Russians were taking Ukrainian children away. He had hidden the ones he cared for in homes in Kherson, but the Russians had taken the older boys, including Dennis. It wouldn't be until after Ukraine's army liberated Kherson and Russian forces retreated that Scripps News would learn and be the first to report the chilling details. Traversing a war-ravaged road lined with landmines, we made it to Kherson and finally met in person the orphanage director, Vladimir Sahaidok. He told the story of what happened, how last summer armed Russians wearing face masks showed up at the orphanage, forcing Sahaidok to show them where the children lived and taking files on them. And then the Russians returned a second time. The second time, 14 journalists, security services, and soldiers came, he said. Naturally, the children were scared, as well as the staff, but we withstood the pressure with dignity. Sidok says the Russians tried to film Dennis for propaganda, but he refused. The boys were patriotic. They said, we don't want to be filmed. We don't want to talk. And they didn't give an interview or anything, he says. No interview. Yet. Throughout occupied Kherson, children were disappearing. Sahidak took us to a church where another group of orphans, infants and toddlers, were hidden until Russian soldiers found them and took them away. He suspected the Russians would come back for the children at his orphanage, so he closed it and secretly sent them into hiding in homes of volunteers and teachers. But Dennis, he ultimately could not save. The Russians took him along with three of the older boys. Are you worried about Dennis? Very, he said back in November. Why? Because, he said, these are our children. These are our children would become the rallying cry of the Ukrainian government, which estimates 10,000 Ukrainian children have been forcibly removed. Some, Russia changed their names, birth dates, and put up for adoption. Others taken to Russian-run camps and schools. One of those Russian-run schools is where we next saw Dennis. Under what pressure, we don't know. Dennis appeared on Russian state TV. Today, we visited one of the schools from the Kherson region, the Russian reporter says. Orphans who were evacuated from Kherson live here. Today, they got humanitarian aid. He asks the school's director about the students' mental condition. At first, they were upset, she says. Now, when they saw that they are surrounded by love, care, and attention, they calm down. And then, Dennis, answering the reporter's question. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to serve in the army. I'm ready to serve Russia. In another interview in April, it appears that Dennis might be reading as he repeats Putin propaganda on Russian TV that Kyiv and the West are the terrorists killing civilians. We have made a historic choice to be together with Russia. 
Back in Kherson, a city under relentless Russian shelling, Sahidak had seen the videos of Dennis. This video could have been made at gunpoint or under the pressure of those people who worked with him from the FSB. The FSB is Russia's security service. He'd also exchanged some texts with the boy. I assume that our chats were monitored by the FSB, he says. At this point, Dennis's story had reached Kyiv, where Ukraine's intense efforts to bring home its children were having some limited success. Save Ukraine, an organization devoted to rescuing the stolen children, had arranged through secret means the rescue of several small groups. Mikola Kuleva, who heads the organization, discussed with us a risky plan in the making to rescue Dennis as well. Clock's ticking. He's going to turn 18 in July. Yes. It's mean that very soon he can be sent to Russian army. If we will not rescue him, he could die as a Russian soldier. During our interview, he called a staff member for an update on Dennis's case. Are there some young people who've been russified and who don't want to go home? Yes. Yeah, we have these cases when relatives asking us to return these kids and we negotiate with these children and they tell no. I, we don't want. Save Ukraine would send a small group of relatives and guardians into Russia, including Dennis's godmother. They flew to Moscow to try to claim another group of children. But the plan, at least for Dennis, would go terribly wrong. As seen in video released by Moscow. Save Ukraine says at the airport, Russian authorities detained his godmother, who endured two days of interrogation and threats of imprisonment. They did not allow her to travel to Dennis. If she was successful in getting to Dennis, do you think Dennis would have gone back to Ukraine with her? With his consent, the Russians would have no choice but to let him go, says Sahidak. I think they decided not to risk it and didn't even give them a chance to meet. How do you feel right now about the situation? I'm so sad that he's not coming back, he says. I hope that he will do everything possible to return to Ukraine. No, 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 no. Would Dennis have gone home with his godmother, joining the convoy of 12 other children, had she managed to reach him? Save Ukraine doesn't know the answer. I don't know what really happened inside him. It's, it's one thing what happened outside, what he expressed and doing something, how Russian propaganda influenced on him. He's a child. Dennis, like thousands of other Ukrainian children, a victim of Russian atrocities, in which Russia treats them as spoils of war. Jason Bellini, Scripps News, Kiev, Ukraine. Municipal bonds don't usually get the media coverage the stock market does. In fact, most people don't find them all that exciting. But if you're looking for the potential for consistent income that's federally tax-free, now is an excellent time to consider municipal bonds from Henyon & Walsh. If you have at least $10,000 to invest, call and talk with one of our bond specialists at 1-800-465-8465. We'll send you our exclusive bond guide, free, with details about how bonds can be an important part of your portfolio. Henyon & Walsh has specialized in fixed income and growth solutions for 30 years and offers high-quality municipal bonds from across the country. They provide the potential for regular income, are federally tax-free, and have historically low risk. Call today to request your free bond guide, 1-800-465-8465. That's 1-800-465-8465. Surprise Dad this Father's Day with something new. Fracture turns your images into more than a picture. Your photos are custom printed directly on glass to achieve brilliant color and clarity. Visit TryFracture.com and save up to 30% off. Every day, more dog people and more vets are deciding it's time for a fresh approach to pet food. They're quitting the kibble and kicking the cans and feeding their dogs dog food that's actually, well, food. Developed with vets, made from real meat and veggies, portioned for your dog, and delivered right to your door. It's smarter, healthier pet food. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then, Worthy sent Lila her money. Get what you're worth at Worthy.com. 
Attention all business owners. If you had W-2 employees during the COVID-19 pandemic, you may be entitled to up to $26,000 per employee with the Employee Retention Tax Credit. The deadline to file your claims is approaching. Call now to see if your business qualifies. This approved payroll tax refund program from the U.S. Treasury Department is set up to reward business owners who kept employees on payroll during the pandemic. There is no upfront cost to see if your company is eligible. Plus, if you don't receive a refund, you pay nothing. You want a trusted partner who understands the IRS guidelines. ERC advisors are standing by to help your business claim your COVID refund. You may be entitled to up to $26,000 per employee. This quick and easy call can get your business the money it deserves. Don't miss the deadline to file your claims. Just call 800-259-3916. That's 800-259-3916. I don't get paid until next week. I got you. I'm Dave, and I can spot you up to 500 bucks of your future money instantly. Up to 500 bucks instantly? What else is in my future? A new couch. Only. Get up to 500 bucks instantly with Dave. Local, national, and worldwide headlines. Breaking down the day's biggest stories with live reporting from around the globe. I'm Del Walters, and this is The Debrief. Live tonight, starting at 6, 5 central, only on Scripps News. Well, in honor of Pride Month, Scripps News is shining a light on the unwavering resilience of the LGBTQ community. Political correspondent Alex Miller sat down with an activist who's been reflecting on how far the community has come. David Mixner is acutely aware that now he is one of the last pioneer voices in his community. I'm sort of sitting here by default, and I know it, and I know I carry that burden to never let people forget. When he started his civil rights journey more than six decades ago, the world looked different. First, as a closeted anti-war activist, he saw firsthand homophobia alongside people he was fighting with. He asked himself one simple question that changed it all. I said, how can I have fought for all of those people and not fought for myself? That decision set off an awakening, personally and professionally. When I came out at 30, it was the greatest liberation of my life. My life began then. God put you here in the earth for only one reason, and that is to help and serve others. He spent his career working on campaigns, fighting bigoted initiatives, and supporting his community through the AIDS epidemic. I lost 310 friends, my partner of 12 years. I gave 90 eulogies in two years. A lot of those people who were dying, even in their last couple of weeks, went to the streets and act up and other organizations fighting for the right to live. It propelled him to push those in his own political party to become more accepting. A lot of Democrats who I had worked on their campaigns and helped get them elected and even wrote checks for, sent the checks back because they didn't want me on the uh, list of donors. That included a million dollars Mixner and his friends tried to donate to the Michael Dukakis campaign, but were rejected. So he put his power behind Bill Clinton, who promised to work towards a cure for AIDS and to support gay people in the military. Mixner became one of the president's closest advisors. In 1993, Clinton announced Don't Ask, Don't Tell. That policy allowed the LGBTQ community to serve as long as they didn't openly talk about their sexual identity. We're a nation that prides itself on honesty, probably more than any other nation. George Washington didn't chop the cherry tree down, honest Abe. Uh, we send people to prison more often for perjury, for telling a lie, than we do for the actual crime they committed. And in business, we don't care what you did, just don't lie to us, unless you're gay. And then you're so bad and so evil, every institution, every individual says, please lie to us. You're the exception to the great American love affair with the truth. That policy changed his life. He protested, got arrested, lost his job, and then couldn't get work for almost four years. So was your relationship with the president ever the same? We decided that to agree to disagree and, and uh, sort of patch things up, but it was never again the same. In the 30 years since and reflecting on his entire career, Mixner says there are beautiful changes everywhere. We've gone from lobotomies to marriage to having families. 
uh, to being able to put pictures of our families in the corporate boardrooms. But he knows the progress is only as good as the next generation's ability to keep it. We never can let our guard down. We're in a big battle right now to preserve what we've gained. You want me to be partially free? We want me to give you permission to take away my freedom for your political convenience? Oh, no. Oh, no. That's not negotiable. Mixner believes the movement is in good hands moving forward. And his advice? Crystal clear. Don't hate the haters. Don't make them become what they are. Don't surrender your basic humanity under attack. Just strengthen it. And more powerful love is, the more we can defeat them. Alex Miller, Scripps News, New York. It was a big, big moment from 229 spellers down to one. This is the moment that this year's National Spelling Bee champion said that he has worked so hard for. Oh, it's surreal. I, I didn't even let it settle in and like, I don't know, my legs are still shaking. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, we're going to be sharing that word that scored him that trophy plus a $50,000 prize. We'll be right back. Mom, we're so glad you're feeling better. You gave us such a scare. I know, honey, me too. But I want you to know I'm at peace with my home going when my time is up. And did I also tell you that I got coverage for my funeral so you and your brother would not have to worry about expenses? I didn't know you were saving money for your final expenses. I haven't. I called Open Care, and with one phone call, I was eligible for $30,000 for my funeral and final expenses. That's wonderful, Mom, but how did you pass your medical exam with your health condition? Well, that's the best part. No medical exam is needed. That's right, and my rates can never increase, my benefits will not decrease, and my coverage will never be canceled. Mom, I'm so glad you called. Mm -hmm. You can now get up to $30,000 in life insurance coverage to help pay for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam, and you can be enrolled with just one phone call. Your rates can never be increased, your benefits can never be decreased, and your coverage can never be canceled. Call the number on your screen now and see how a final expense life insurance plan can help you. We don't want to leave our loved ones with debt. The cost of a funeral can be $8,000 or more. A final expense life insurance plan Plan will pay up to $30,000, which can be used for funeral and other final expenses. Call 800-915-6980 now for your free information. You can now get up to $30,000 in life insurance coverage to help pay for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam, and you can be enrolled with just one phone call. Your rates can never be increased, your benefits can never be decreased, and your coverage can never be canceled. Call the number on your screen now and see how a final expense life insurance plan can help you. There's no obligation. Call 800-915-6980. That's 800-915-6980. Wendy only met Marco eight days ago while searching for freelance web developers on Fiverr. But the incredible website he delivered made him an invaluable member of the team. Demarco! Expand your team with a Fiverr freelancer. Sure, you should teach him to ride a bike. Then, use Greenlight and teach him how to invest in bikes. Teach him to be smart about money, and he'll go far. Super far! Oh, hey, Mom! Navigate the world of money together. Invest in your best investment. Greenlight. At Rulala. Feel like a million bucks. Without paying the price. Seize the deals on top names like Valentina, Vince, and more before they're gone. And through La La every day to score up to 70% off iconic brands. Shop RuLaLa.com today. would like to hear from you. You can give us a call on our Scripps News viewer hotline. That number toll-free, 1-833-4-SCRIPS. It's right there on your screen. You can share your comments and your story ideas. Okay, so after several days of competition, hundreds of spellers and thousands of words, 1B went home with all of that honey. 
The Scripps National Spelling Bee crowned 14-year-old Dev Shaw, the 2023 champion last night. Scripps News correspondent Maya Rodriguez witnessed the teenager buzz his way to victory one word at a time. What a night. We had spelling, we had word definitions, we had drama, and in the end, we had a champion. And we are coming to you live from just outside Washington, D.C. With 11 finalists on stage, it took 15 rounds of spelling for this year's Spelling Bee champion to finally emerge. <laughs> Dev Shaw winning it all in his third year at the Bee and the final year he could qualify to compete. It's kind of a dream come true, but I just, I can't tell if I'm dreaming. The winning word, samophile, an organism that thrives in sandy areas. An appropriate word for the new bee champion from the coastal community of Largo, Florida. <laughs> Getting to this point though, meant beating out 229 other competitors in the bee and his fellow finalists. When it came down to the final two competitors, B officials placed a buzzer on stage, but in the end, a spell off was not needed. We've all been through this in the last three days. It's been a wild week. But even before this week of spelling, he says, it took a lot of hard work. This last month, I kind of made a lot of sacrifices. Like if there were field trips, but I knew it wouldn't be worth it. And that confidence paid off earning him a $50,000 grand prize. But there is one thing the new B champion is now really looking forward to the most. Sleeping, because there have been a lot of sleepless nights recently. I'm just really happy and I'm just thinking about what's next. I know I, I always say um, focus on the next step, but I guess now I'm just, I'm excited to see what's next. Something that I wanted to point out that people at home didn't get a chance to see actually happened during the commercial breaks. And that's when we would see the 11 finalists on stage chatting with each other and encouraging each other. Dev told us that they actually all became friends over the course of this week. And that is part of what makes the B so special every year. Maya Rodriguez, Scripps News, National Harbor, Maryland. And a big, big congratulations to Dev Shaw. Okay, quick programming note. Friday nights are all about women's basketball on ION. You don't want to miss a double dose of WNBA action. It all begins at 8 p.m. with the Las Vegas Aces and the Atlanta Dream. And then the LA Sparks will be facing the Phoenix Mercury. That's going to happen at 10. Don't miss your shot to catch these two matchups. You can head to IONWNBA.com for further viewing details. And we have much more coverage to come for you in your next hour of Scripps News Live, the nation avoiding a debt crisis after lawmakers vote yes to a bipartisan deal. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. We're going to explore what's next in this process as that clock winds down. We'll be right back. Al, did you make that call? Honey, we already have Medicare. Why do I need to call? Alan, the Feldman said we may be able to get additional benefits with a Medicare Advantage plan right here in our zip code with zero dollar monthly premiums. Honey, what do you mean additional benefits? We turned 65, we got Medicare. That's all there is to it, right? I'm talking about Medicare Part C, commonly called Medicare Advantage. We have traditional Medicare, which is only Medicare Parts A and B, but not Part C. Wait. So not everyone on Medicare is a Part C plan? No, that's why we need to call because there may be plans available with additional benefits that aren't covered under Medicare Parts A and B. We don't have a Medicare Part C plan which covers everything in Part A and Part B plus extra benefits in Medicare Part C. What kind of extra benefits? There are great plans that may be available with extra benefits like dental, vision, and hearing. Did you say dental? Yes, dental. Medicare Part C plans could include dental benefits that help cover routine dental exams and teeth cleanings, plus dental x-rays, fillings, gum disease treatment, and dentures. We need that. I'm calling. 
If you're losing coverage, moving, or new to Medicare, call to speak with a licensed insurance agent. If you don't have a Medicare Part C plan, call now because there may be plans with additional benefits available that are simply not covered under Medicare Parts A and B, like routine dental coverage. If you're on Medicare, you can call even if you called last year. We will check to see if there is a Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. Remember, you don't get Medicare Part C benefits automatically. Call now now for your free 2023 no obligation Medicare benefits review. Call 800-817-7602. 800-817-7602. Are you or a loved one between the ages of 50 to 80 years old? If you are younger than 80 years old, do you receive Social Security, Disability, or Medicare? If you answered yes, you may qualify for $30,000 in funeral insurance for only pennies a day. The average funeral costs around $11,000, and Social Security only pays $255, leaving your loved ones to pay the balance. Call now to see if you qualify for $30,000 in funeral expense coverage from Senior Legacy Life. Your rate will never increase, your benefits will never decrease, and there is no medical exam, even Even if you have a pre-existing disease or illness, don't be a financial burden to your family. Lock in your rate by completing an application over the phone right now. Will you qualify for funeral insurance up to $30,000 for only pennies a day? Find out by calling Senior Legacy Life. Call 1-800-300-5808 to speak with a licensed insurance agent. That's 1-800-300-5808. Justin Rose is a major champion, a man with the skills to win and the style to look great, whether he's on the course or off, wherever your tour takes you. Do you have an idea for a story you would like to see or a comment on our coverage you want to share? We want to hear from you. Call our Scripps News viewer hotline at 833-4-SCRIPS. That's 833-4-SCRIPS. TGIF, congratulations, you made it to Friday. Thank you so much for staying with us. It is now 1 p.m. in the East, 10 a.m. out West, and I'm Veronica De La Cruz. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. We begin right now on Capitol Hill, where a crisis has been averted. That debt ceiling bill now heads to the president's desk in order to be signed into law. Last night, that bill easily sailed through the Senate. Final tally, 63-36. Now, President Biden has to sign that bill, which he is expected to do tonight. Let's get you right out to congressional correspondent Nate Reed, who's live on Capitol Hill right now. Okay, Nate, so the Senate voted to send this Fiscal Responsibility Act to the president's desk with really no changes, and that's despite votes on 11 different amendments. Uh, Tell us more about about these amendments and why they failed. Well, look, it was a grueling night, but at the end of the day, this is a 99-page debt limit bill, and an amendment could not be won. And the reason is, if they had changed this debt ceiling bill, they would have had to send it back to the House of Representatives for them to pass it. The House of Representatives wasn't even supposed to be here in Washington last week. They stayed around in order to pass the debt limit bill, and frankly, the timing just did not allow for the House of Representatives to have to take this bill up again and try and pass it through the House a second time. So, ultimately, all of those amendment votes failed. The bill unamended now goes to President Biden's desk. Democrats, though, are notching the fact that their strategy worked here as a major victory. Here's Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer late last night after the vote. Now, Democrats are feeling very good tonight. We've saved the country from the scourge of default, even though there were some on the other side who wanted default, wanted to lead us to default. We may be a little tired, but we did it. So we're very, very happy. And this is a major victory for not only Democrats and President Biden, but also Speaker Kevin McCarthy in the House of Representatives. He was the one who was able to reach this 99-page agreement with President Biden and his negotiating team. Ultimately, this is what's going to be when President Biden signs it tonight, what prevents the U.S. from defaulting on its debt. I see that you do have the bill right there, uh, Nate. So I want to go ahead and (laughs) comb through some of the fine print because I believe that the agreement is now good for what? The next two years. When are they going to have to take this up again? January of 2025, and that's going to be a very interesting time indeed. 
Uh, realistically, it's going to be late 2024 between the 2024 presidential election and whoever wins that election, whether it's President Biden or someone else being uh, sworn in on January 20th of 2025. So it's going to be a very interesting time, the lame duck period here in Congress. Uh, there are already rumblings, though, on the Republican side that this can be very difficult to do, specifically because a number of Republicans were left with a bad taste in their mouths over the way that Speaker McCarthy handled this with President Biden. Take a listen. This is a budget of political compromise where people have lost sight of what the country needs. We need safety and security. To my House colleagues, I can't believe you did this. To the Speaker, I know you got a tough job. I like you, but the party of Ronald Reagan is dying. And at this point, despite the objections of a number of both progressive Democratic senators and conservative Republican senators, this 99-page debt limit bill with a number of spending changes, changes to some entitlement and SNAP food benefit programs is still headed to President Biden's desk. He, of course, expected to address the nation at 7 p.m. tonight and sign this bill. So what is that term again, Nate? Is it is it kick the can down the road? I'm just busy marking my calendar for January 2025 when we have to discuss all things debt ceiling yet again. <laughs> I, I don't want to hear those words, Veronica, until January 2025. So remove <laughs> debt limit from your vocabulary after President Biden signs this bill later tonight. All right, will do. Nate Reed reporting live from Capitol Hill. Nate, thank you so much. So provision in that agreement will soon be bring the pause on student loan payments to an end. Todd Wilson with Scripps News Palm Beach spoke with borrowers about all of this additional stress. It's been a long journey and it's got a couple more years on it to go. Taylor Halligan says she's been paying her student loans since 2011. I'm definitely grateful that we had a break between having to pay it. Uh, I'm, I feel prepared to be paying it. Restarting student loan payments could soon become a reality. Some payments have been on hold since 2020, but the deal over the nation's debt limit could bring a restart in late August when the payment freeze ends. The main concern is that this would prevent President Biden from doing an indefinite extension to the payment pause and interest waiver if the U.S. Department of Education loses, loses the U.S. Supreme Court case. Kevin Kantrowitz is an expert on planning and paying for college. He says the payment pause and interest waiver basically set the interest rate at zero. In September, new interest will begin accruing. I'm expecting that we will see an increase in uh, delinquencies on the federal student loans uh, for the first few months, um, but then things will settle down and borrowers will get back to repaying their student loans. Cantrell Witt says for the 42 months the loans were in hibernation, he says it cost the federal government billions in interest payments. Halligan says she's ready. I mean, I've been preparing for this, so I've just been saving in a specific account so that I'd be prepared for this. In West Palm Beach, I'm Todd Wilson reporting. Now, borrowers should receive a notice at least three weeks before that first payment is due, and you can also get ahead of the game by contacting your loan provider. Now, to add on to the financial stress for borrowers, a bill to block President Biden's student loan forgiveness program is now headed to his desk. Yesterday, that Senate voted to block the relief plan, which is going to cancel up to $20,000 in debt for millions of borrowers, and the House passed this legislation last week. A few Democrats joined Republicans and voted on the bill. Biden has promised to veto it, but his forgiveness plan is still in jeopardy. The Supreme Court is set to rule on two legal challenges to the program later this month or in early July. And these aren't only uncertain times for people with outstanding student loan debt, but also for recent high school grads who are about to take on that debt. College admissions consultant Jason Weingarten says that students need to conduct a cost-benefit analysis that you need to really understand is the college that you want to go to, the college that you want to take out tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars, really worth the paper that degree. The worth the paper is written on. For most people, the answer as of now is going to be sadly no. He went on to say that the government might be contributing to higher education's high costs by subsidizing student loans. So Wall Street investors have enthusiastically responded to the news on the debt ceiling. Take a look at the board. 
Dow Jones jumping more than 600 points this morning. In fact, the Nasdaq hitting its highest level in more than a year today. All three indices are on the green right now, so some good news for investors. And another reason for the market rally was a better than expected May jobs report. Public and private payrolls grew by 339,000 people. And that surpassed Wall Street's prediction of adding 190,000 jobs. The May jobless rate, though, rose to 3.7%, slightly higher than predictions. So a new CDC report out shows that the post-pandemic baby boom was more of a baby bust. Data is showing that U.S. birth rates fell from 2021 to 2022 or remained flat. Scripps News correspondent Maura Sirianni breaks down these numbers and reveals these new trends. Yeah, it is a lot to unpack, but this data uh, really is kind of telling here. There are a few main takeaways. For starters, women are waiting until later in life to have kids. Um, and for the past 16 years, the fertility rate in this country has declined, tracking below the replacement threshold. What that basically means is that the number of births a generation needs to uh, replace itself has dwindled. So the latest information from the CDC finding last year, there were nearly 3.7 million births. That's about 3,000 fewer than in 2021. You may not be thinking that's a lot. The CDC even calling this a non-significant decline, but there were some trends uh, that stuck out. Here's a look at trends over the last decade. For starters, birth rates for moms in their teens and early 20s hit record lows in 2022. The new data finding the rate for 15 to 24 year olds decreased by about 3% from the previous year. And the CDC reports birth rates for women ages 30 to 34 stayed about the same as uh, 2021, accounting for more than 1 million births last year. But women Women ages 35 to 44, that's the age group that saw increases from um, the, the previous year. So that age group as a whole is currently seeing the highest birth rate since the 1960s. And earlier on Morning Rush, we spoke with a doctor about what she thinks could be some of the reasons behind that trend. So I think the increase in women in the workforce has certainly contributed to this. Additionally, the increase in women utilizing services such as ovarian uh, cryopreservation or freezing their eggs and having more and more companies actually uh, paying for this or covering this for women has allowed women to really um, delay childbearing in a way that we've never seen before. Science has come a long way. Also noteworthy, births in Hispanic mothers, two Hispanic mothers rose 6% while births to white moms fell about 3% and births to black moms fell uh, about 1%. And if we kind of break this down by state, 38 states in DC experienced a drop last year while states mainly in the Southeast saw an increase. Guys, Florida and Texas leading the pack. Maura Sirianni reporting there, Maura, thank you so much. So not all babies are born healthy and crying. Some are much more fragile, yet they're also among the toughest of infants. Heidi Alago with Scripps News Tucson takes us inside a neonatal ICU, and she spoke with a family who's been grateful for the care that their twins have been receiving. I get to hold babies and walk around here and hold a baby, Who and I get paid for it. They are the Knights of the NICU. Started out as a cuddler. Yeah. I did that for four years and I decided to go back to school and become a nurse. These nurses care for the smallest of humans. The NICU is definitely like a world of its own. Some days I'm jumping for joy, you know, and uh, um, some days I'm hugging my son a little a little tighter. With complex technology making neonatal care possible. Now we're trying to make it as close to um, the womb okay. environment as we can. I want these parents to be an expert at their child's care when they leave this hospital. Samantha Eckert is no stranger at the NICU. These are my fraternal twin girls, Charlotte and Madison. They were born at 24 weeks and they both weighed about a pound and a half. Her babies have spent over three months here. It doesn't feel so much like a hospital anymore because of the nurses. I can leave knowing that my babies are taken care of. But as time passed, it's gotten harder. I've noticed that as they're getting bigger, it's even harder for me to leave because, you know, I'm not leaving the nurses to do nurse things. I feel like I'm leaving the nurse to do mom things. There you go. Ten years ago, Samantha was told she couldn't have kids. And we were like, oh, it's okay, we'll adopt. And so we did. Um, and we knew we didn't want to adopt babies because babies always get homes. So that's why we, we adopted the older kids. She and her husband have three teenagers at home. I always thought that I was not able to have children because I was made to have the other two that I have first. For Samantha, Maddie and Charlie are the true definition of miracle babies. This all happened for a reason. They've given their mother more than just the gift of motherhood. This experience has convinced me to go to nursing school. 
I've decided I would like to be a NICU nurse. It's like I finally found a passion. So in a few years, the Knights of the NICU will be getting a new member. You, you become part of their family. They become part of your family. It's pretty amazing. All thanks to the amazing care they've provided for Samantha and her little girls. The babies that stay here um, for long periods of time, um, I, get, I get attached. I probably shouldn't get attached, but I get attached. <laughs> That was Heidi Alaga reporting there for us. More Alzheimer's patients could soon have access to new drugs. Medicare only plans to cover FDA-approved medications. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services says that physicians will be required to submit data on the drug's effectiveness. The FDA granted accelerated approval for two drugs, and a panel will be voting on whether to recommend full approval for one of those drugs next week. Alzheimer's affects more than 7 million Americans over the age of 65. Still ahead on Scripps News Live, we're going to take a closer look at growing efforts to address the homeless crisis in Portland. Also, where a years-long investigation stands involving the iconic ruby slippers from The Wizard of Oz. And don't forget, you can always count on Scripps News for all of your headlines throughout the primetime hours as well, beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern. Shopping for Father's Day is hard. Actually, it's easy. You never know what to get him. Just give me steak. It has to be perfect. Yep, dads want steak. Right now, Omaha Steaks is offering dad's favorite gift package that includes four of our exquisite bacon-wrapped filet mignons, four air-chilled boneless chicken breasts, boneless pork chops, jumbo Frank's dessert, and more. All for just $99.99. Save 61%. Order today at omahasteaks.com slash TV, and you'll get eight burgers free. Now that's what I'm talking about. A better banking app is right at your fingertips. Download Dave, and you can get up to $500 instantly, right through your phone. There's no interest, no credit checks, and no late fees. Because getting help shouldn't set you back. Ditch the big banks and trust the bear to get up to $500 instantly. Download the Dave app now, or go to Dave.com today. If I had to replace my engine, the bill would have been over four grand. But my Endurance Auto Protection Plan covered it all. A broken AC unit costs over $1,800. A transmission, over $3,000. And an engine, over $4,000. Breakdowns used to mean paying thousands out of pocket until now. Go to EnduranceWarranty.com or call Endurance today and stop paying for expensive auto repairs. Call 877-204-1467 or visit EnduranceWarranty.com for a free quote. Create amazing work with Fiverr. All you need is your team and a talented freelancer who will lend a hand and seamlessly join your team from just about anywhere. Expand your team with a Fiverr freelancer. Subscribe today. This is a paid advertisement for legal services. Breaking news for anyone who spent time at Camp Lejeune before 1988. President Biden has signed the PACT Act. This means you may be entitled to significant compensation from the federal government. If you or a family member spent time at Camp Lejeune, you consumed toxic water known to cause serious health issues, injuries, and even death. A special hotline has been established. Call now for a free case evaluation. Just call 800-793-0837 now. Even if you've been turned down in the past, this new legislation allows you to refile a claim. This will not affect your eligibility for VA disability benefits. These are benefits you earned and deserve. We encourage anyone who spent time at Camp Lejeune to file a claim. Call now to see if you or loved ones qualify for significant compensation from the federal government. Don't wait. Just call 800-793-0837 now. That's 800-793-0837. Mexican authorities say 45 bags of human remains found in a ravine might be linked to seven missing call center employees. Those workers last seen between May 20th and May 22nd. A Mexican newspaper is reporting the call center is linked to cartels and that employees would call American retirees to try selling them fake timeshares. 
That 76 year old man will have to prove that he didn't steal the iconic ruby slippers from the Wizard of Oz. Terry Martin pleaded not guilty in federal court yesterday. Prosecutors accuse him of swiping the shoes from a museum back in 2005. Now the FBI recovered the slippers nearly 13 years later. Scripps News correspondent Casey Mendoza has more on the investigation. And tap your heels together three times. For 13 years, a pair of the famous ruby red slippers from The Wizard of Oz was missing. Valued today at $3.5 million, the shoes were stolen in 2005 from the Judy Garland Museum in the actress's hometown of Grand Rapids, Minnesota. Over the past two decades, the theft launched an investigation from the FBI and it inspired a podcast, documentary, and several true crime sleuths to speculate on the mystery of the red shoes, which were recovered by the FBI in 2018, but who have remained tight-lipped on the circumstances. The mystery of the thief or thieves still stands, but a federal case in Minnesota may soon reveal what happened. On Thursday, 76-year-old Terry John Martin, accused of stealing the iconic red slippers, pled not guilty to major art theft. Martin lives just 12 miles from the museum, and it's unclear what the feds think his exact involvement in the theft was. The true art in an art heist isn't the stealing. It's the selling. Robert Whitman is an author and retired special agent from the FBI, where he founded and led the Bureau's national art crime team. He and other experts say it's not surprising that it took 13 years to recover the lost shoes. I've had investigations that took 20 years. Um, I recovered a, a group of Norman Rockwells that were stolen from uh, uh, Minnesota in, in the late 1970s and got them back in 2001. So that was almost 22 years later. In fact, my oldest piece was an original copy of the Bill of Rights. Believe it or not, it was uh, sent to North Carolina in 1789, uh, stolen in 1865, and we, we recovered that in 2003. Investigating these sorts of crimes is very difficult um, because um, when people steal large value items like a masterpiece painting or something like uh, Judy Garland's uh, ruby slippers, these things are highly recognizable and highly valuable. And those two factors combined make, uh, make it difficult for thieves to fence them, to sell them, uh, even on the black market. Anthony Amore is a fellow author and art theft investigator. He says the biggest difficulty of cases like this is the fact that stolen art can easily stay hidden for years before being sold on the black market. The global annual revenue from the illegal trade of stolen artifacts is estimated to be between 1.2 to 1.6 billion dollars. Because of this person's age, because of uh, the situation where it took this long, I wouldn't be surprised if in the end, he gets charged with the possession and the attempted sale or the brokering of the museum artifacts. Because if it took them this long to even arrest him, then that means there's been an investigation for this long, and that means there's got to be mounds and mounds of documentation and legwork that's been happening that needs to be reviewed. Court TV legal correspondent Julia Janae says there's no rush for the case, despite the high-profile nature of the theft. The next hearing is scheduled for July, but prosecutors indicated that the trial will include evidence of co-conspirators and and confidential informants. Casey Mendoza, Scripps News. Well, a judge has approved the settlement in the Rust movie wrongful death suit involving actor Alec Baldwin. The family of the film's late cinematographer Helena Hutchins filed the suit against Baldwin, producers, and others last year. The agreement means Hutchins' family can now be compensated for her death. Hutchins was killed when a prop gun that Baldwin was holding on the movie set somehow fired a live round. Prosecutors have dropped charges against Baldwin. Portland, Oregon is facing a homeless crisis and it's been getting worse. 75% of voters call Portland's homeless problem a quote, disaster. And that's according to a new poll for people for P Portland. Homelessness is a complex problem that can't be fixed without human connection. Scripps News correspondent Vanessa Mashanya recently traveled to Portland to meet with advocates and witness their work addressing the issue. Oh, I'm 
older, so I've been doing this since the 1990s, it was clear to me at least that if money were the solution, we would have solved it by now, and that wasn't happening. This is what Kevin Dahlgren has been doing for the last three decades. Kind of becoming more vocal, saying, well, maybe we need to rethink this. We keep throwing money at the problem, but it continues to get worse. For 28 years, he's been working as a drug and alcohol counselor and advocate for people living on the streets of the Pacific Northwest, currently focusing 100% on his hometown of Portland, Oregon. He believes that there's a lot of solutions currently in place by governments like Housing First that are missing the mark because he says more people need to listen to the unhoused about what they think they really need. They don't understand why they're not actually getting the real help. This is why a majority of homeless, this is another controversial thing, but it's true, will say no to housing because they've tried it and they don't want to be isolated and away from their family, which is their street family. And usually that's when their depression kicks in because most homeless on the streets have a history of childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. And those demons will come back out when you are isolated by yourself and all you have is your thoughts. So when I'm out doing outreach, I always carry a handful of Narcan. This is an opioid blocker because I see a lot of overdoses out here. So we're gonna walk around and say hi to some people and see how it goes. Almost every day, he's here, trying to make connections, trying to listen. He documents his work on his social channels, giving a live platform to current realities of those living on the street. My name's Kevin, by the way. I'm D. D? You have a knuckle thing. Oh, all right. thanks, brother. Yeah. Nicole. <laughs> using drugs and everything and it's like your emotional uh your emotional um maturity is stunted like you stop growing in like a lot of ways you're, you're like you're just like problem solving skills seem to like fade away like for some people or they just never had them and stuff you know what i mean yeah so it's like you see people like almost regress nicole and d like so many wanted to share their stories but weren't ready to accept help well there's a mistrust in the system there's a mistrust because nobody is out here actually talking with them you heard her after we finished talking. She said, thank you for listening to me, right? They're not used to it. Dahlgren is unconventional and sometimes controversial in his field. Along with being against housing first, he's openly critical of Oregon's decriminalization of drugs, the giving away of clean drug supplies, and believes many policies today just make it easier to live on the street. It starts with the outreach. It starts with the boots on the ground, being there, talking with them. That is step one, the most important step. They're on step eight or nine saying, let's build these multi-million dollar apartment buildings, but when we move you in, we have no expectations of you, right? I mean, think about that, that's insane. It can sound harsh, but he believes the fentanyl crisis has created a dire need for a tough love approach. To him, he's going by what he sees and what he hears. Fentanyl has uh, come to be a uh, very scary uh, reality for a lot of people. Like what he heard from Tony, an unhoused man who didn't want his identity shown. It's like a remedy, in other words, for people who really need to die and who can't die, who are stuck in a circumstance. Tony says he would like more outreach workers to talk to him more often. I can't be out here forever. Like, I'm supposed to be enjoying, um, I have, uh, like, to be normal, like, to have normal opportunities of happiness and to express um, joy. You met anyone yet who actually enjoys being out here? Some have said they choose it, but it doesn't mean they like it, right? Choosing something doesn't mean you necessarily like it. So, so far, high percentage of people actually want help and want outreach and they haven't seen it and wondering where it is. Mm -hmm. Dogwin hopes to help others think about what progress could be made if more people just listened. That was Vanessa Mishania reporting for us there. All right, let's get you overseas now, where U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is saying that Russia's invasion of Ukraine was a strategic failure. During a speech in Helsinki, Blinken said a ceasefire or ending the war would be a mistake because it would allow Russia to retain land that it took. He said Russia is worse off than before the invasion began. Where Putin aimed to project strength, he's revealed weakness. Where he sought to divide, he's united. What he tried to prevent, he's precipitated. That outcome is no accident. It's the direct result of the courage and solidarity of the Ukrainian people and the deliberate, decisive, swift action that we and our partners have taken to support Ukraine. Blinken's speech in Finland followed a meeting of NATO foreign ministers in Oslo.
straight ahead on Scripps News Live. Former President Trump feeling the heat once again surrounding the investigation into his alleged mishandling of classified documents. How a reported audio recording could only add to his legal problems. And we'd like to remind you right here to follow us at Scripps News on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. We'll be right back. This is an important message from USA Family Protection. You may now be eligible for up to $50,000 for your funeral and other final expenses, starting at less than a dollar a day. Mom, it's so great to see you. Oh, you too, son. And I have to tell you, I've been thinking about the future, and it's really important to me that I don't leave you and your sister with my debts, especially the cost of my funeral and other final expenses, which can be more than $9,000. <sighs> yeah. That would be really hard on us. Well, I call USA Family Protection, and with one phone call, I was eligible for $50,000 for my funeral and final expenses. But what about your health issues? Don't they require a medical exam? That's the best part. There's no medical exam, just a few quick questions, and I was able to get coverage right over the phone. Plus, my rates can never be increased, my benefits can never be decreased, and my coverage can never be canceled. That's really great, Mom, but can you afford it? Yes, rates start at less than a dollar a day, and when the time comes, payout to you and your sister happens in as little as a few days. I am so happy to know you two are taken care of. Thanks, Mom. Me too. Don't leave your loved ones with your debt. Call USA Family Protection at 800-782-2317 and get up to $50,000 for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam, just a few health questions, and you can be approved right over the phone. Your rates can never be increased, your benefits can never be decreased, and your coverage can never be canceled. Call 800-782-2317. There's no hidden fees and no waiting periods to get covered. Call 800-782-2317. There's no obligation. Call 800-782-2317. 800-782-2317. Surprise dad this Father's Day with something new. Fracture turns your images into more than a picture. Your photos are custom printed directly on glass to achieve brilliant color and clarity. Visit tryfracture.com and save up to 30% off. Sure, you'll teach her how to drive a car. Then use green light to power her independence. With crash detection with 911 dispatch, family location sharing, and emergency SOS alerts. Invest in your best investment with green light. From every walk of life. Oh my God. These are the untold accounts. The voices breaking silence. Join renowned journalists and filmmakers for news stories every week. I have to help expose that. Is that a, a pro-life ethic? It just don't make sense to be here. That makes sense at all. Scripps News Showcase, Sunday nights at 9, 8 central on Scripps News. from you you can call us on our scripts news viewer hotline that number toll free 1-833-4 scripts share your comments and your story ideas hey there welcome back to scripts news live good to see you on this friday i'm veronica de la cruz it's time now to get you caught up on the day's top stories so after weeks of negotiations the u.s has avoided a debt ceiling default the Senate approving the debt ceiling and budget cuts package last night, one day after the House did the same. Now, neither side got everything they wanted, but that agreement will raise the debt ceiling until 2025. An internal investigation into an eight-year-old girl's death in Border Patrol custody is raising serious questions about the agency. The child suffered from a chronic heart condition and a rare blood disorder. Her fever was 104.9 the day before she died. The investigation revealed Border Patrol medical staff didn't review her file and also found that a nurse practitioner refused her mother's repeated requests to call an ambulance. The U.S. is increasing the number of appointment slots for migrants that are using a mobile app to seek asylum along the U.S.-Mexico border. There are now 1,250 appointments available. Back in May, it was 740. The U.S. is hoping increasing the number of appointments will encourage more people to use it. 
So the Justice Department is saying former Vice President Mike Pence won't be facing charges for the possible mishandling of classified documents. The DOJ confirming that it sent Pence a letter clearing him of any wrongdoing. Around a dozen documents turned up at Pence's Indiana home in January, and they were immediately given to authorities. The former vice president took responsibility and conceded that mistakes were made. In the meantime, former President Trump is not off the hook for classified documents found at Mar-a-Lago. A lot of the focus has been on an audio recording of Trump talking about a classified document that he kept. Scripps political director Andrew Rafferty updates us now on the investigation. New developments in the investigation into former President Donald Trump's handling of classified documents. Federal prosecutors have reportedly obtained an audio recording of the former president taken during the summer of 2021. During that recording, sources say Trump admitted he held on to a classified document that detailed a possible attack against Iran. CNN was the first to report on the existence of the recording. The outlet says it was taken during a meeting at Trump's golf course in Bedminster, New Jersey. Among the participants, people helping former chief of staff Mark Meadows pen his memoir. The audio hasn't been made public, and Scripps News has not listened to it. The anonymous source who spoke to CNN refused to disclose exactly what Trump said word for word. Attorneys for the former president say he had the authority to take whatever materials he wanted out of the White House. But I'm not going to bite on a leak campaign and try the case in the media. What I will tell you is there is no doubt that as commander in chief and when the president left Washington DC for Mar-a-Lago, he was actually still president. When he left for Mar-a-Lago with boxes of documents that other people packed for him that he brought, he was the commander in chief. There is no doubt that he has the constitutional authority as commander in chief to declassify. It does not have to go through some sort of bureaucratic process to be declassified. But, so. According to CNN, the recording is in the hands of special counsel Jack Smith. Hello, everybody. Hello. In sources tell the network it was played during testimony given to a grand jury looking into Trump's alleged mishandling of dozens of classified documents discovered at his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida. If all this is true, the recording stops on Trump's claims he made just weeks ago at a CNN town hall that he declassified all government documents that were in his possession after he left the White House. Did you ever show those classified documents to anyone? Not really. I would have the right to. By the way, they were declassified what do you mean not really? after. Not, uh, not that I can think of. I don't have anything. I have no classified documents. And by the way, they become automatically declassified when I took them. Former prosecutors say any evidence proving Trump knew he had classified material and understood the restrictions around it would be key in the decision to criminally charge him. If it's true, it is the biggest nail in former President Trump's coffin to date. I mean, as a white collar prosecutor, you, you always strive to get the principal target on tape admitting the crime because the hardest thing to prove is whether they knew their conduct was criminal. Trump has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing when it comes to allegations that he mishandled classified documents. The special counsel's office refused to comment on reports surrounding the recording. Andrew Rafferty, Scripps News, Washington. Michael Scotto joins me now live. He is a criminal defense attorney at the Scotto Law Office specializing in white-collar crimes. Michael, thank you so much for your time today. Good morning. Good afternoon. Excuse me. I'm used to coming on at 7. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michael, what does this all mean? What could this recording do for, for Jack Smith and his investigation into these classified documents found at Mar-a-Lago? Is this the nail in the coffin, like that former prosecutor was just saying? Is this game over for former President Trump? Well, you know, obviously a lot has to do with what, what the tape says, but clearly the defense that's been erected, um, you know, towards these pending charges or potentially pending charges is that he declassified everything um, or didn't know what he had. Here we have uh, apparently a recording uh, that the president, former President Trump knew was being made uh, because as we know from the media reports that he had an aide recording uh, interviews with, with some other people who were writing books, and apparently this was in connection to that. So we knew the recording was being made, so we'd have no reason not to um, you know, accurately uh, reflect what was going on. And he admits that he had this classified document, and in the recording, apparently, he admits that it wasn't uh, declassified. So this whole defense of automatically everything was declassified when he took it out of the White House and he left, 
Um, you know, that that never was a good defense, in my opinion. But clearly, he didn't even believe that when the recording was made. Again, if this is what's on the recording. And clearly, it's an identifiable document that had to do with a very serious issue, which is war plans, potential war plans against Iran. Um, so again, there's 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 no defense in, in that case, in in that uh, you know the movers just packed everything up and and we left with all this classified material. I, I think what makes it very different than the case with former Vice President Pence is there was no evidence that um, former Vice President Pence knew that he took any documents when he found out that there were classified um, uh, documents. He contacted the government and he returned them. And in and in the case of former President Trump, it's it's much different. Uh, yeah. But I think this tape, if it is as advertised, is is extremely damaging. And when you look at the different presidents, vice presidents who have been implicated uh, in these types of situations, whether it is President Biden or a former Vice President Pence, uh, the timeline also matters, I would assume, because they both yeah. reacted swiftly, uh, from my understanding, returned those documents and, and then uh, and complied with the investigation. Right. Right. And again, I think that's the, the distinction between uh, the reason why the criminal investigation against former President Trump is, is still proceeding is because he didn't do that. He did apparently, according to what we've read, exactly the opposite. You know, didn't have it. Um, you know, his attorneys had submitted affidavits saying we did a thorough search and we didn't have it. And of course, ultimately, the government executed search warrants and they found, you know, many of the things that they thought would be there. Um, so I think that's that's the distinction. And again, it could be possible that, uh, you know, as we know, with former VP Pre uh, Pence and and uh, President Biden and also uh, Pre former President Carter, that, you know, apparently there were some classified documents that that managed to, to leave uh, office when when they left office. But again, it's the way that they reacted um, to that. And then they returned them when they when they realized. Michael, I want to pull back the curtain for just a second and, and ask you to take us through the process here, because during a CNN town hall, we remember that Trump stated that those documents were automatically declassified. He said that he could declassify them just by thinking about it. What was he talking about exactly? And what is the actual process to declassify documents? Well, I mean, the, the process is it's a formal process. So the idea that you know, the president could merely think about it. I mean, you know, the town hall, look, in my, that, that's, in my opinion, that's, that's his, that's the, the public relations end of this. That it would not be a defense at, at, at trial, frankly, because it's just not the case. But now, given the tape, you know, even if that's the defense you were going to proffer, there's, how could you proffer that? But, you know, there's a formal procedure for declassifying things. And there have been many experts who, who you know know this issue much better than than I do? Um, you know who have laid that out. Again, it's not just the case that I'm the president and you know I I just decided that on my way out of office I'm going to magically declassify things. Um, it just doesn't work that way. Uh, and again, we we know that if this recording is accurate, he didn't believe it worked that way when the recording was made. And so you know what was he saying at the time when he didn't know this was an issue? He was saying apparently it needs to be declassified. Wow, I didn't do that before I left office. Um, what's what's he saying now and what are his attorneys saying in the light of a criminal investigation? Oh, there's some sort of presidential magic that, you know, everything's declassified as long as I take it out of, uh, you know, um, the White House. Um, so, I, again, I think that's the significance of this tape and it's powerful evidence. You know, when you're, you're doing a criminal investigation and I used to do a lot of wiretap cases, you're trying to get, you know, courts to grant you a wiretap so that you can listen in to what's going on. And here, again, we have the president's own words, which will, if, if this story is true, will be played back before the grand jury. And if there's an indictment returned, will be played before uh, the, uh, the pettit jury that hears the case. And uh, again, it'll be powerful evidence because it will establish his knowledge of what he had, that it was a serious document. I mean, there may be some unclassified document or classified documents that people say, well, they're not all created equal. But I would have to say, in my opinion, you know, plans that had to do with a potential war against Iran you know, that's putting service uh, uh, members in, in danger, and it's very serious. And again, in this case, the recording, which, you know, we haven't heard yet, but if it's as advertised, it, it admits his knowledge that, that it was a serious document. It admits that he had it. it. He admits that it wasn't declassified, and it also, he admits that it should have been. So it is a powerful piece of evidence. I mean, nail in the coffin, I, I guess, yeah, sure. That's, 
that's certainly a powerful piece of evidence. And Michael, what kind of charges are we talking about here? I mean, if, if these recordings do exist, well, it's and the president the has acknowledged Act, that he and, wanted to share this classified information, uh, could this start another investigation? Yeah. Would, we look, would we be looking at the Espionage Act here? Uh, what kind of charges could he be well, facing? And, and what do, how do you think this all plays out? Act. Right, it is potentially an Espionage Act, Espionage Act case, and, and just for simply taking the documents and, and retaining them and not, not doing anything with them, you know, it's a potential 10-year sentence. You know, these are serious charges, and again, uh, you know, just uh, gathering or transmitting this information and, and just permitting it to be removed, and even with gross negligence, it's actually a, a lower standard, right? Gross negligence, that finds somebody guilty of this charge um, and again, the, the, the penalty is up to 10 years in jail. There was a, an NSA employee about, I don't know, 16 years ago who took two boxes out when he left the NSA. The FBI executed a search warrant and, you know, wasn't clear whether he intended to use them. But that gentleman was uh, basically sentenced to six years in, in federal prison. And then there's the other more recent case with um, her name is actually Reality Winner. Um, and she was also a uh, uh, leaking classified information and, and I believe she received a three-year sentence so I mean these are very serious charges um, and I think particularly the nature of, of the document if these were war plans against against uh, potentially a, an adversary like Iran that it, it just makes it a much more serious situation so will he be criminally charged and potentially face prison time I, I mean it's up to it's up to whether the special prosecutor asks the grand jury to, to to charge him but you know based on if this tape is what it is and and it, it seems to be by all accounts yeah it, it would be a very uh, low standard um, you know just probable cause standard for the grand jury to return uh, an indictment so it's a question of whether or not uh, Jack Smith decides that the case um, should be considered by a grand jury. But yeah, I, I think there's a, a very good chance that, you know, if this is it's true that these recordings, this recording exists, that yes, the president, um, this, this is, you know, right now, you know, given what we now know, I think the most serious case that's um, currently pending, although I understand um, Georgia uh, may be coming down sometime over the summer as well. So yeah, there's, I, you know, I can't predict whether Jack Smith will ask a grand jury to return an indictment, but I would say that any prosecutor who had that type of evidence would under the circumstances and I think you know I would have to think I hope to think most fair-minded Americans would think that this is a serious thing and it's not a, a political um, a witch hunt as the former president has said at various times. Well we've got an election right around the corner so we're gonna have to see what comes next in all of this. Colonel Defense Attorney Michael Scotto thank you so much for joining us today uh, in the afternoon not in the morning always nice to see you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you so Life continues after this. Are you ready for a fresh new bath or shower? Well, now is the best time with 50% off installation and no interest and no payments for one year. Hi, I'm Christina, and it's time to flip your old worn out bath or shower with Jacuzzi Bath Remodel today. Everyone knows the Jacuzzi brand. They're the most trusted name in water for over 60 years. But did you know they can install a gorgeous bath or shower that feels incredible in as little as one day? It's no stress and no mess with a lifetime warranty. Now let's talk beauty. You deserve to start and end your day in a beautiful space that feels great and is custom designed just for you. So call or go online now to see the Christina preferred designs like Canyon, Farm, and Urban. Now that's the total bathroom beauty that I love at a price you can afford. And how about safety? Like an ultra low profile, easy entry shower complete with grab bars and a custom design seat. You deserve safety and peace of mind without sacrificing style. Because with all the worries in daily life, taking a shower shouldn't be one of them. Every time I stepped over my old tub, I worried I might fall. I don't have those fears anymore. Jacuzzi Bath Remodel gave me a gorgeous shower that's safe too. I've been trying to get him to remodel that bath for years. I called and they did in just one day. And at a price we could afford. With one call to Jacuzzi Bath Remodel, you can effortlessly transform that old, ugly eyesore into the stunning bath or shower of your dreams that you'll love for years to come. Call or go online now to jacuzzibathremodel.com to get 50% off installation. Plus, ask how you may qualify for no interest and no payments for 12 months. And when you call right now, we'll give you our complete safety upgrade for free. Go to jacuzzibathremodel.com or call 800-218-1279. That's 800-218-1279. Call now.
Attention all business owners. If you had W-2 employees during the COVID-19 pandemic, you may be entitled to up to $26,000 per employee with the Employee Retention Tax Credit. The deadline to file your claims is approaching. Call now to see if your business qualifies. This approved payroll tax refund program from the U.S. Treasury Department is set up to reward business owners who kept employees on payroll during the pandemic. There is no upfront cost to see if your company is eligible. Plus, if you don't receive a refund, you pay nothing. You want a trusted partner who understands the IRS guidelines. ERC advisors are standing by to help your business claim your COVID refund. You may be entitled to up to $26,000 per employee. This quick and easy call can get your business the money it deserves. Don't miss the deadline to file your claims. Just call 800-259-3916. That's 800-259-3916. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then Worthy sent Lila her money. Get what you're worth at Worthy.com. At Rulala, feel like a million bucks without paying the price. Seize the deals on top names before they're gone. Get in to never miss out. Shopperlala.com today. Well, after several days of competition, hundreds of spellers, thousands of words, one B went home with all of that honey. The Scripps National Spelling Bee crowned 14-year-old Dev Shaw, the 2023 champion last night. Scripps News correspondent Maya Rodriguez witnessed the teen buzz his way to victory one word at a time. What a night. We had spelling, we had word definitions, we had drama, and in the end, we had a champion. And we are coming to you live from just outside Washington, D.C. With 11 finalists on stage, it took 15 rounds of spelling for this year's Spelling Bee champion to finally emerge. <laughs> Dev Shaw winning it all in his third year at the B and the final year he could qualify to compete. It's kind of a dream come true, but I just, I can't tell if I'm dreaming. The winning word, samophile, an organism that thrives in sandy areas. An appropriate word for the new bee champion from the coastal community of Largo, Florida. Getting to this point though, meant beating out 229 other competitors in the bee and his fellow finalists. When it came down to the final two competitors, B officials placed a buzzer on stage, but in the end, a spell-off was not needed. We've all been through this in the last three days. It's been a wild week. But even before this week of spelling, he says, it took a lot of hard work. This last month, I kind of made a lot of sacrifices. Like, if there were field trips, but I knew it wouldn't be worth it. And that confidence paid off earning him a $50,000 grand prize. But there is one thing the new B champion is now really looking forward to the most. Sleeping, because there have been a lot of sleepless nights recently. I'm just really happy and I'm just thinking about what's next. I know I, I always say um, focus on the next step, but I guess now I'm just, I'm excited to see what's next. Something that I wanted to point out that people at home didn't get a chance to see actually happened during the commercial breaks. And that's when we would see the 11 finalists on stage chatting with each other and encouraging each other. Dev told us that they actually all became friends over the course of this week. And that is part of what makes the B so special every year. Maya Rodriguez, Scripps News, National Harbor, Maryland. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, the emotional surprise at a high school graduation. I haven't seen her in a couple of years, you know. It's good to uh, you know, see her again. Coming up after a quick break, we're going to show you the reaction from a Navy officer's little sister after she saw her brother behind the graduation stage. Attention all seniors, you can now get up to $50,000 for your funeral and other final expenses, including your credit card debt, with no medical exam, starting at less than a dollar a day. Oh, honey, you're dead and I can't stop talking about this baby that's coming. We've also been thinking a lot about our future, and no matter what, we want to make sure we aren't leaving you and your family with any of our debts. 
Just last week, we read that the price of a funeral can be $8,000 or more. Wow, Jeff and I definitely would not have the money to pay for that. And that's just a funeral. But you don't have to worry. We called and with one phone call, we were eligible for $50,000 for our funeral and final expenses. Well, that's great, but don't you need to take a medical exam to qualify? You and mom have some health issues. No, there's no medical exam and we were able to get coverage right over the phone. And our rates can never be increased, our benefits can never be decreased, and our coverage can never be canceled. I'm so glad you made that call. Don't leave loved ones with your debt. Call 800-339-7996 now and see if you qualify for up to $50,000 for your funeral and other final expenses starting at less than a dollar a day. There's no medical exam and you can be approved even if you have pre-existing health conditions. Your rates can never be increased, your benefits can never be decreased, and your coverage can never be canceled. There's no obligation. Call 800-339-7996 now. There's no paperwork. No no hidden fees and no waiting periods. And you can start coverage right over the phone, starting at less than a dollar a day. Call 800-339-7996. That's 800-339-7996. 800-339-7996. Shopping for Father's Day is hard. Actually, it's easy. You never know what to get him. Just give me steak. It has to be perfect. Yep. Dads want steak. Right now, Omaha Steaks is offering Dad's favorite gift package that includes four of our exquisite bacon-wrapped filet mignons, four air-chilled boneless chicken breasts, boneless pork chops, jumbo Frank's dessert, and more. All for just $99.99. Save 61%. Order today at omahasteaks.com slash TV, and you'll get eight burgers free. Now that's what I'm talking about. I don't get paid until next week. I got you. I'm Dave, and I can spot you up to 500 bucks of your future money instantly. Up to 500 bucks instantly? What else is in my future? A new couch. Only! Get up to 500 bucks instantly with Dave. There's a better way to begin your mornings. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Rush. On the stories that will shape each day. There's a new study that might make you feel a little bit better. So you can get on with yours. Morning Rush. Weekday mornings starting at 7, 6 central. Only on Scripps News. So there's no doubt about it. Graduation ceremonies are typically filled with surprises. But Spencer Joseph with Scripps News Salt Lake City shows us one very special reveal that had a graduate in tears. <laughs> graduation it's full of pomp and circumstance some call it enjoying the journey celebration so I encourage you try tradition and speeches but for one individual this is a special day time flies you know it's been like what four years since I graduated and it doesn't seem like that. <laughs> Second class petty officer Ryan Allred went to West Jordan High School. So good to see you. Good to see you this too. is a cool surprise. He's been on deployment in Hawaii for the past three years, working on 737s. But this Thursday, he's peeking out behind the curtain to get a glimpse of his sister. I haven't seen her in a couple of years, you know. It's good to uh, you know, see her again. Riley Allred is a senior, and today is her big day. And with each picture taken, Francesco. and each name read, Rebecca Nixon. You nervous? A little bit. <laughs> it comes time for the big moment. in the making. A moment so sweet it made all the hard work to get here worth it. Yes. <laughs> oh, you, gotta, you gotta go get out there so you, get your, so you go graduate. Just keep pushing yourself and then like you'll achieve some things. And of course there's that cool factor too. It makes me feel cool because it's like I get to flex who my brother is. So it's like, yo, this is my brother, guys. Yeah. So it makes me look cool. Cool 
indeed, as this graduate goes on to conquer the world with her brother by her side. Now that I actually have done it, it feels like a rite of passage, you know? Spencer Joseph. Life is about the little moments. It is just so sweet. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill passed the bipartisan debt deal, so how do we avoid it from ever happening again? That's a big question. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz, and I'll see you back here at 3 p.m. Eastern. Lauren Magarino has the details, though, after a quick break. This is an important message for anyone and everyone on or eligible for Medicare. If Medicare is important to you, then you need to hear this message because Medicare benefits matter to millions of Americans. Did you know Medicare has different parts, including Medicare Part A and Part B, often called original Medicare? And then there's Medicare Part C, representing Medicare Advantage.